currently hosting a teacup gamer. And hopefully soon my screen will change to show that I'm hosting myself. Although whether or not you can actually host yourself is sort of an open question. The fact that we have not started streaming yet is somewhat worrisome. I will check the uh, proper... Uh, okay, all right, there we go. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, not sure why there was a delay there, but uh, more so than normal. All right, uh, the, I do have this uh, file that says readme stream, which has pretty much nothing to do with anything because we're not going to be using it. We're going to return today to um, finding functions from other functions. And we had run into a problem last time that extract variables will also extract symbols like pi, which are not variables, but they are symbols as far as Mathematica is concerned. So let's go ahead and confirm that this is wrong. It's always the first thing to do is, uh, well, the first thing to do is, is you know, blame someone. But, but the second thing to do, and we'll go ahead and just redefine it here. The second thing to do is to uh, try to, you know, uh, delete all the evidence that something went wrong. Okay, so we can extract variables. So let's just, you know, see how this works in an expression like a plus b plus c, and we should get back a, b, c. Easy as one, two, three. La, 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 la. But now if we add in pi, which is a constant, or pi over e, because they're both constants, we get both e and pi in there, which we don't want. So how do we get rid of them? Well, I actually did a little bit of uh, looking yesterday. Now, if you do something like question, question, pi, if you haven't used Wolfram Alpha before, um, oh, with numerical value equal to this. I think that should be an, is that an approximately equal to. Anyway, the attributes here is what we want. Constant protected, read protected. So now if we do the same thing for, let's say, a variable a, which we have defined, we will see something different, hopefully. Global a, but there's no attributes to it. So the attributes, we could look for the attribute constant or protected or read protected, but I want to be a little bit uglier and just say um, the variables we want will have no attributes whatsoever. So from this list of delete duplicates, we could say select um, attributes of the thing we're looking at is mathematically equivalent to the empty list and do that. So now what happens? I don't know. Um, let's see what this does. Now we are happy and joyous that we're just getting back A, B, and C, and not any constants. In fact, we'll get back nothing that has uh, attributes. Um, so I guess there's some question about whether we can do this. I mean, it's going to be really yeah. Cosine is a is a built-in symbol, obviously, so it's not going to be. It's going to not. It's going to have attributes. And it is good that we don't want to do it this way. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this back in here. Um, do this. I want my, I don't even know why I want, I'm getting highlighting out of nothingness. Anyway, so this is the, what the extract variable should be. I'm going to push it just to be super paranoid to get. Um, obviously, we've made one very minor change right now. We don't need to be pushing to get, but I like, I like just creating as many commits as possible, no matter how useful they are, which this is probably not that useful. Okay, so now we're going to go back and try to extract our uh, data or extract, you know, other relations from our existing uh, relations. And then, we're, you, know, you know, hopefully the next step will be we need to combine relations to find uh, functions that we didn't have before. Uh, and I'm using the words functions and relations sort of uh, interchangeably, of course, if you're a mathematician or if you're, you know, uh, you know that a function has to have only one output, whereas a relation, there can be uh, zero or more than one for any given uh, domain value. However, you can actually extend the definition of function to use a power sets or to use subsets so that it, all relations can be treated as functions. Um, I'm probably going to regret saying that. But that is, that is, I'm pretty sure that's true, actually. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our, um, not this, not this, this guy. So we had found a bunch of relations for, um, by the way, I think that my question that I asked on, not here, uh, which I asked on Mathematica, but it still hasn't been answered. Um, 
And what a good idea here would be close other tabs. Yay. Sucking up a lot of uh, memory there. Okay. Uh, or whatever, some, some resource. Okay. All right, so let's go back over here. Let's find our... Um, so this was one relation we had that we wanted to suck all the information out of. I don't remember what the result was. I think this one we turns out to be too easy. Um, uh, let's see, we do have a bunch of to-dos that we need to look at. Um, pi is not a symbol. Booyah! Done. Okay. And let's see. So we so we are trying to do here uh, too much at the same time. Okay. Symbol list variable define convert. So define convert, which no longer has the same meaning that it did before should, in theory, give us all possible formulas for a given expression. Um, realistically, I don't know if that's going to happen. Let's see if this does. Well, actually, just control Y. keep forgetting, I'm in Emacs. Ah, your mama! Okay, uh, this, is the, this is the first 20 minute and uh, multiple, no Pomodoro here. We will start Pomodoroing in the next, uh, the next time we uh, hit a 20 minute interval, which means I get up and walk around for two minutes. Okay. Alrighty, so we have this expression, we have a lot of cool stuff defined, and this should give us, I, I'm very hesitant to say this should give us something useful. I'm going to go ahead and do a reset start session, although that really doesn't seem to do anything useful. Uh, it certainly doesn't do what I wanted to do, which is to, uh, you know, undo all the variables and stuff. Okay, so we are going to put our formulas in here. Now, I'm going to briefly, because I'm using the free version, um, if I do upload, um, I can't do upload. Hmm. It won't let me anyway, because I'm using the free version, and that's something they want to put in as a um, duplicate, download, print a PDF, delete, file info, revert to backup. Wow. Publish, share, maybe I can do it from over here. I mean, I can't, but nope. Oh, let's get rid of this wolf guy. I hate this wolf guy. Really, really sucky wolf guy. Um, cloud files, quick links, documentation, plan basic. I'm not going to upgrade. Um, okay. Well, all right. I guess there is no way to. Um, new notebook, browse cloud files. Duplicate, download, print. Hmm. Well, there used to be at least an option for upload, even though I couldn't actually use it uh, because I'm on the free plan. The question is, can we have this read its uh, data from somewhere else instead of having me having to cut and paste it each time? This is probably not a good idea anyway, but let's find out. I think, I mean, I don't think it'll allow me to do it, to be honest. Um, so if I did something like this will this will probably not work for multiple reasons. Ooh, ooh, wow, it did work. Okay, so if I could manage to put this on the web somehow, I mean it's already there because it's my GitHub. Um, I could, in theory, uh, have it load automatically. The problem with that is I'm like 99% sure that's going to be harder to do than just cutting and pasting it in. However, it is something I want to keep in mind um, for the future, for future, re for the future reference, for future reference. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Escape W. It's not that hard actually to cut and paste. I'm just hoping to get a sort of more, uh, you know, interactive uh, view of things. Uh, I suppose I could use the um, the 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 local version that lets me connect to the web, the uh, Wolfram script or whatever. But that pretty much sucks balls too. So, really, I think this is sadly the best option. Doesn't make it a good option. All right, let's see what this does. No, 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 no. These should be the same, you piece of crap. Um, merge. This is one big calculation. Hit return, and nothing happens. All right. Um, that was shiny. Um, let's do it one more time. Damn it, it also disconnected again. Um, 
Okay, hang on. This guy and this guy and this guy. Okay, fine. Oh, 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 these whole things are all different. Okay, hang on. Let's see if we get them all together. There we go. And then I can do a merge cell. So th that's why it wasn't working. So merge cells. This is all one big Horkin cell. And now if I hit shift return, something should happen. Not necessarily something good, but just something. <whistles> oh. Really? Incomplete expression. This should be valid Wolfram code. Um, let's see if it's my define convert that's messed up. Hopefully the remainder of the code is valid because it is a it's library code essentially. Um, okay, strangely enough, it, that nothingness means it is correct. So what am I trying to do here? Define convert. I might need to put parentheses around this because it is a um, it is an expression and it might just be kind of choking on that. So let's go ahead and do this. Norm convert of the expression that is this. And let's go scroll down and see what... Ooh, there we go. Alrighty. So this says... Oh, this is complicated. This says... Um, if you have A, X, Y, you can get F. Like doing this. And if you have... AFY you can get X and if you have blah 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 but I think we looked at this one earlier I, and it, I'm bored of it now uh, we will use it later but for right now we're kind of like eh, okay um, so now what we want to do is let's take a look at the uh, I think the second one's really really similar to the first one and we've done it this one is not interesting this one's not interesting this one was the one that we had some issues with because um, because of pi so this is the one that yesterday didn't work and today, uh, you know, will also not work, but hopefully for different reasons. Yeah, I don't like to, I don't like to get your hopes up. This probably won't work either, but this is probably one of the more interesting um, sort of, uh, sort of equivalences that we have in our set here. Okay. And let's see what you give us back as output. Okay, part of the problem here is you can't solve for all the variables. At least Mathematica can't. Apparently you can't solve for any of the variables. Really? Okay, you should be able to solve for area pink. That's, that's, that's... Um, that's not cool. Let's try this. Okay. Area pink equals blah, 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 blah. Oh. This is not cool. I mean, there are definitely errors in here. That is not a that is not the uh, the issue. Um, okay. Um, the issue is it should at least for the ones that are solvable. Area pink is just defined like this. So that's fine. Um, probably if none of the others might be um, might be definable. Okay. So we, we can get around this. We can do equation equals, and we'll basically do the. We will basically do the computation manually. Also, I will learn to talk. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is something like solve. Actually, the first thing we want to do is extract the variables. Uh, make sure we're using the right variables out of the sucker. And the variables we expect to see are area pink a b uh, x and not pi. Nice. Just. Gorgeous, very quickly done. Okay. Okay. So that's, so then we're going to try solving it for each of the variables. And I think the only one that's going to work is this one. Yep, which is just a, which is just a uh, spit out. Okay. Then let's see what we do next here. We can extract variables. Okay. So, um, Define converts basically map solution to function over variable solutions. Variable solution solves it for each variable. Um, okay. So if we're correct here, variable solutions is going to also fail because it's not it's not going to be able to solve for all of them. And we need we do probably need to handle the error. Whoa. Is this working? Yeah, there we go. So this is still good. We have area pink goes to something. Oh, wow. Um, 
And the next one is a is a is a um, is a bland. So, it, so it can't solve it for the other two. So area pink is, and I'm not surprised by that. So this is okay. Okay. So now the question is, why is this? Um, and I'm sure I know the problem is because you can't have a raw solve inside of this. Um, so let's see, extract variables, da, 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 da. we w define convert, solution to function. So here is, okay, so for the first one of these things, let's go ahead and give this a, a temporary name, call it temp1049, and we will say um, solution to function of temp1049.1, just the first solution, and I think that one's going to actually be okay. Um, yeah, this is what we expect. The form of variables, the output, the variables as something you put into a function followed by the function body. Everybody got that? And now let's make our, um, let's go ahead and reduce the amount of output we have. I don't know if error, I think errors will still show up despite this. Yeah, but only the errors will show up. Okay, so now the question is, um, Let's try to solve it for part two, and what, what happens here? Okay, this is where it gets really, really ugly. Because um, it tries to treat, uh, this is fine, but it tries to treat the uh, solved solution as a variable. So now, let's see, solution to function, variable solutions. So let's take a look at temp 1049.2, which should actually be an unresolved solve. It should just say solve of something. Okay, fantastic. Now, I want to ask for the head of this, because if it, if I can extract these, if the head of this is solve, booyah! And is the head of it equal to solve? More booyah. Okay. So what we can do here um, from, let's see, um, da -da 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 -da, so simple division, blah, 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 solution to function. Um, and what we need to basically is just to check here to say that if, um, let's see, how var equals blah, 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 in var. Okay, so we just do this here, actually. Or we cannot. Okay, here we go. If head solve equal equal solve return, hmm. I think I have to ret I, I can return the empty set, but I can't return nothingness. So, oh, that's not good. Hang on. And do I need a then condition? No. Okay. I think I can do this without a then condition. I think mathematical will allow this. Okay. So first, let's just see if the damn thing compiles before we copy it back. Okay. That error message, I think, is still okay, though. Okay, so let's see, solution to function, um, actually, oh, durst we? Let's durst. Let's go ahead and see if we can just do, I need to change the name of this function, define convert of the equation. And, uh, well, let's not get rid of everything here. All right, show me, show me the magic. Okay. Okay, so this is ABX. Can be converted to area pink using this formula? Null, which is what I returned. And our second one is area pink AX. Oh, wow, you can get B out of this sucker. Uh, oh, because I guess B is just a multiple of this. It doesn't actually get involved in the uh, ugly stuff, I think. Let me take a quick look at e EQN. Um, yeah, it looks like you could factor a B out of this. I didn't realize this until just now. The A is really sort of caught up in there because it's in an arc sign and it's inside of a square root. It's kind of hard to drag that out of there. So, okay, and the other one's null. And this is gorgeous. Uh, I mean, we're getting closer to what we want. It's not gorgeous, gorgeous, but we're getting closer to what we want. We're saying from that one we can extract formulas that take A, B, and X to area pink and area pink AX to B. Um, some really weird shit here, by the way, that uh, not every, we don't necessarily need all of these functions, but we can get that. Okay, so now we will continue 
with so now we've done something we didn't do yesterday, which is we have found a way to um, uh, we have found a way to suck functions out of something where only some of the variables can be solved for, not all of them. Um, okay, so this is if I put this one in, it's going to be very easy what it can solve. Um, but then we want to start combining stuff. The eccentricity, not interesting area. FOP, not interesting. Uh, tang FOP. Okay. Now, th 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 these are not particularly interesting in and of themselves because they only have two th relations like this. Only have two variables, and it's very easy to convert from one to the other. Um, but they might be useful when you um, when you include them with other rela other relations like this one. So, for example, um, this will tell me that angle FP is the arctangent of y over F minus X. So I could put that in here and then say angle AFP is equal to pi minus uh, angle OFP. That sort of stuff. Um, so now you would think uh, that I will continue with doing some ellipse equations, but I don't really like ellipses that much. So what I'm going to do and what I'm really excited about um, is the, the sort of the Astro library I've been trying to create. Uh, because the, the one of the issues it has is that there's so many different things that are true, um, but it's still, oh, I do have ellipse properties in here too, um, that I, you know, I can, I can come up with some equations, and I've come up with several here, uh, way b you know, between the excessive comments. Um, this one is a very trivial one, but you know, it's, it's useful. This I'm not going to use. This is a way of approximating solar uh, declination and right ascension, but it kind of sucks. And these are actually maybe too trivial, but but again, um, these are functions. These are sort of the really uh, the really awesome functions um, that we have here. And okay, so these are um, inclination of the. This does not work. Conditions. Oh, simplifications. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, so sort of the big, big equation that we have is uh, the um, converting, if you have the right ascension, declination, latitude, longitude, uh, you know, your position and the RA declination of what you're looking at, and the Greenwich mean standard time, GMST, you can get back uh, the azimuth and altitude. Uh, this is a little ugly because it takes, a, it takes in um, five variables and returns two. The ugly part is that it returns two. Uh, something very easy you can do to get around that is to just basically break it into two pieces. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to try to solve for um, each variable, and that that is going to be well fucking exciting. Okay. So we'll make a little section for ourselves. We will copy over the nice. Um, the nice sort of formulas that we had here, because we're going to use them. The uh, how do you how do you get crap out of crap? Yep, that's what I wanted. Okay. Uh, in theory, we should sort of like uh, whoa 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 whoa. Undo. I don't know what the hell I just did. Oh. Okay. Yes, this confused me here because. Um, it's not something we don't, it's just a comment, we don't need it right now. Okay, so this is sort of the, um, we can't put this in the, um, um, uh, we can't put this in formulas because we already have a formulas up there, but we can put it into um, some sort of tags to tell us this is the stuff we're going to keep going with. Okay, so now, the big, big formula we need here is RA deck to, uh, uh, and then we're going to sort of uh, get the pieces out of it uh, and then put that over here. And of course, this is going to be a relation. Not We're going to convert it to a relation, uh, not a um, not a function. Although functions are relations, blah, 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 blah. Okay. See, this is weird. I just I just said reset everything, and yet it still wants, it wants to have this here. So... It's kind of weird. I don't, I don't really get what it's doing when I say restart session, except for bringing up the wolf guy, who everybody hates. Um, okay. 
So now we're going to have, um, we need to evaluate this because this is just, uh, this is what gives us the actual values that we, we can evaluate. And so now I want, actually let me just type it out, well, okay. So what I want now is not a separate cell. Nice try, Mathematica, but I fooled you. Okay, RA deck lat lon GMST. Um, and I want the first element, which should be the azimuth. Okay. That's suspiciously nice looking. Okay. And then I w this is equal to the azimuth. Um, so do I, is that, it? that is input form, isn't it? All right, Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we are back. Okay. So I think this is an input form, but I'm going to make sure by saying input form. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I can just use this the way it is. And this is, of course, equal to the azimuth. That is one of our relations. So now, using our magical powers, we can say the increasingly badly named uh, define convert on this. If we're lucky, we're going to get so, so much cool information, I will be happy. If we're unlucky or more likely just normal stuff happens. Okay, I think I don't, I think I need to define, I need to put all those functions in here first. Okay. So that's not difficult. Escape W, control V. The only problem is it's going to try to maybe create, yep. Maybe I'll just keep these here somehow. Can I collapse them? I don't know if there's a way to collapse them and just say, just fucking load this every time. But anyway, there is a way to do this. There we go. And you just do merge cells. Now, I'm wondering if I could just save this as like uh, a variable extractor shit. Mm, let's print a PDF to the file in none of those. Format. Oh crap, no, no, be gone. Insert evaluation. Oh, oh, there is an evaluate all cells. Uh, does it have a shortcut? Because shift enter is evaluate this current cell. View. Ooh. Cut, copy, paste, convert. Ooh. 
What the hell does that do? That looks shiny. I don't... Can I change it now, or is it... I can. What the hell does that do? Anyway. Um... Something tells me I have done something really terrible, so maybe I can undo it. Mm. I don't think this does anything. Evaluate, copy, paste as, convert to, unset as initialization. <laughs> um, publish, share, email, sell to advanced. Uh, view, uh, share, publish. Okay. Well, Whatevs. Maybe this means I can finally move. It won't keep bumping me all the way back up there when I do stuff. That's this wishful thinking. Okay. All right, boys and girls. Let's see what happens. Moment of truth. Dun dun. Dun 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 dun. Dun dun. Um. Da da. Either nothing is happening or it's thinking. And it looks like um, it's not thinking. So let's do this again. Define convert does have output. So, th oh shit, unless I, okay, hang on. So this part is not initialization. That might be the problem. Because I think initialization, you're not allowed to return anything. So. Evaluation. Abort evaluations. Restart kernel. This should have like a do something useful shit. Oh, okay. It just took too long, but I think there's a bigger problem here. Um. I think now I can do unset as as a uh, unset. Okay, so maybe. Okay, so maybe it is actually taking forever. Be gone, be gone from this place. Apparently, I can't stop it. All right, so let's go ahead and instead of trying to get all of them at once. Um. Let's see here. Oh shit, we we still need the uh, the thing in the lob, which we I think we should just from now on just call these things EQN instead of trying to uh, sort of do this overlap shit. Okay. You can equals that. Um, variable solutions. So for um, let's see. So this also should fail because it, it it's pretty much the same thing. I'm getting kind of sick of this being an evaluation. So let's see if we can. Um, This is good shit. I've really fucked this up pretty good now, I think. I think when there's an arrow... Yeah, I think I'm gonna... Oh, here it is. Unset is initialization. There we go. Now, it'll still not work, but at least it'll not work in a way that I understand. Okay. So, variable solutions, it's not liking that. Um... So let's let's go ahead and extract variables real quick here. That one should work. That's not too bad. And then we'll manually do our solutions here. Now come on, I'm hoping this new calculation overrides the old calculation. Shift enter. Somehow I've met there we are. So the variables here are latitude, uh, declination, Greenwich mean standard time, longitude, right ascension, and azimuth. Not a problem. So now we do solve equation for, I guess, the first of those suckers, which is latitude. Doesn't really matter. Latitude. And we get... Hmm... 
Is this difficult? I guess it is because we do have like some ugly stuff going on here. This is fun. Okay. So not latitude. I guess we need we need to figure out a. That's going to be hard though. Figuring out when there's a timeout or when it's going to take too long and just not do it for those, just like the ones. And the sad thing is it might come back up out and say, I can't solve it anyway. Because I'm not clear having it in here is gonna be able to, is gonna be soluble. Solvable. Soluble means being able to be dissolved. Okay, so we have a second problem here is, ooh, shiny. Um, back here. do if solve times out okay we've handled this solve can't solve it uh, do what and the answer is nothing I guess so let's see if we can solve for declination now that one I think is oh okay but at least it timed out pretty quickly so always GMST see if we can solve for that GMST is in here. Oh shit! It's actually in here pretty bad too, but I think you can. S oh, actually, maybe not. So this is probably another one of those that's going to get aborted after a minute. Good shit here. Um. Now, Mathematica does have a um, a way of breaking out of a calculation if it takes too long. Um, in this case, of course, it'll just do it after a minute regardless because I'm on the free plan. But even if you're on, you know, even if you have more resources, there is a way to limit the resource uh, allocation for a given, uh, a given uh, calculation. So can we get the longitude out of this sucker? Baby needs a new pair of shoes. Okay. This might be... We can obviously get the azimuth out of this, although if it says we can't, I'll be unhappy. Um, the right ascension we have a shot at, because it only appears in one place. Um, wow, I'm unhappy. All right, what about the right ascension? Now, come on, that one you can do, come on. All you have to do is uh, take the tangent of this, multiply by this, divide by that, uh, and then un arc sign that, and then, yeah, maybe you can't. Oh shit, it actually appears in here too. GMST plus lon minus re, okay, that's, that's, yeah, you're not going to be able to do it. All right, and now how about we solve for the azimuth? This better work, because it's, it's literally the equiv equi equality condition. There it is. Okay, so this beautiful function that we have, this beautiful relation we have, doesn't tell us anything. Woohoo! Now, since we have failed, we will fail again. Now we can do the same thing with, uh, wow, I didn't mean to be here, with the uh, azimuth, uh, with the altitude, rather, which is, um, which is basically the same thing we had before, except we're going to now take the uh, second uh, RA deck this sucker um, and I'm pretty sure we have canceled uh, everything so let's do this um, if you restart session everything will be gone but it won't really uh, everything won't really be gone apparently I'm making it really unhappy by restarting my session okay Wow it, it now wants to punish me for reloading my session Mm, not cool. See, I don't know. That's weird. See, I don't know why it does that. Because reset start session should get rid of everything, you piece of crap. Alrighty. No, no, no. What the hell? Don't do that. God damn it. Okay. So now the same equation. Oh, and I guess we should probably keep the uh, the other crap around too. Anyway, um, uh, 
And now I just want this thing on these variables. Okay, and this will be the altitude. Okay, and I did not expect that to be too bad. I do want it in input form. Okay. Maybe at some point I should learn a little bit more about Wolfram Cloud since I'm using it so much now. Because uh, it's clearly not identical to uh, Mathematica. So this is equal to the alt. Okay. Um... So this is our equation, and this time I'm actually not going to go ahead and bother with uh, trying to use the whole function at once, because I, I think this is, might require a little bit more work than, I, than, I'm, than I've put in already. So this is going to be, um, let's go ahead and just say EQN equals this equation, and let's see what, kind of what we can suck out of this equation, which might mean nothing. Okay. Uh, let's extract our variables. I can't do that because I don't have that function defined. So clearly it was a good idea to define our functions ahead of time. And at some point, um, it's got documentation and everything. Um, and I, I might read that. And the, the, the idea here is we're tr going to try to get some of these functions to sort of be loaded permanently, um, and especially the ones in bclib.m, because that, that is a, a, a library every time, instead of having to do this to them every time. Uh, especially since this is now going to be ugly. Extract variables equal I hope that's going to beautiful. Okay, and I'll keep that running there. Solve eqn for latitude. Okay, but at least it timed out. It said I can't do it. That's fine. For declination. Okay, for Greenwich means, yeah, I think we're going to get the same results we got before. Greenwich means, for the longitude. The one thing uh, we, we're going to have issues with is we have the two argument form of arctangent, which maybe is making things harder for Mathematica. Um, and there is a way around that, that that's incorrect, but, but it might be, it might be useful to get solutions out of it that could then be fixed. And I'll do one more. I mean, the altitude is obviously there, but let's see what we can do with the, ar the right ascension. And it's probably going to time out. Yeah, I'm so glad I'm not paying for this computational time. Um, be gone. Okay. So now, this is not recommended by standard practices. We're going to pretend that the arc tangent of uh, the two-form arctangent is actually the one-form arctangent, like this. Um, and I don't think the simplification is actually going to do anything, but anyway, let's find out. So I do want to print out EQN2. Okay. And here you can see the only thing it did is it basically turned this into a divided by. Um, honestly, I'm not sure that's going to help at all. Uh, let's go ahead and extract the variables, which should be exactly the same. Oh, I probably shouldn't be doing this anymore. Let's go to that. Return. I could have sworn I didn't need to abort calculations earlier when I said basically, um, Okay, good. So exactly the same thing. So now that we have this theoretically simpler equation that is in inaccurate, but it is simpler, um, let's solve it for its variables. Let's solve it for the altitude. No, let's not solve it for the altitude. That is, well, let's do it just to make sure it's not gone crazy. Um, now let's do it for the declination. This might be actually doable. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. This this worries me when anytime we have these like dot ones in here, 
The declination can be written as the arc cosine of the d major ugliness or the arc the, the negative arc sine of the arc sine cosine. Um, that is cool. I mean, I think that is awesome that we can do that. Um, let's see what that looks like in input form. Now, there are several things we kind of want to do, like simplify, um, you know, given some conditions. Oh, come on. I ju you just did this. How is putting it into input form any harder? You are a piece of crap. Oh, yeah. Okay, it is in just one second. Oh, yeah. Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Excuse me. And we are back. Okay. So this might be a new formula for me. I'm going to go ahead and paste it into my motherfucker. Um, I'm not going to paste it into my motherfucker. I don't know where he is right now. Uh, I am going to paste it into here, though. This, this is one damn good function. I really like it. Let me see if we have another function that converts to declination. Uh, I do not, so this is actually a new function for me. I did not previously know how to get the declination out of, um, out of the other data that we have. I still don't, I mean, in some sense. This is just a hideous mess. Uh, but okay, let's see. Can we simplify that? Oh, shit. Um, let me see if we can simplify that. I don't... We do have some conditions we could use to simplify it further, but let's just see if we can simplify it. Um, or we get the screen to freeze. Either one. That's good with me. Um, let's see if we can simplify it sort of in a basic way first. Is my screen frozen? No. I th we're still broadcasting, right? Yeah. Uh, are we? Well, it doesn't say how I'm doing, but I am still broadcasting, I think. Okay. So, let's see. Okay, so it is just that. It's just this Wolfram cloud has gone nuts. Uh, not great. Because, um, I mean, I've timed out computations before. I never timed out the whole freaking cloud. That's pretty good. I might, I might have actually broken... Wolfram Cloud. I don't think I have actually, to be honest. I think this is... Let's just do it. Let's do a shift reload real quick. Hmm. Alright, let's just go back to the main page then. This is fun. I, I might have actually broken it. Okay. Let's go ahead and close this tab. Can't close this. There we go. Wolfram Cloud. And this time I actually do want to look at my files, because I, I had something. 
That was... User exploration? Um... Me want to go back to where we w me was before. Okay, so these are the kind of basic versions here. I appear to have lost my, um... I mean, I can always create a new one, which is what I'm doing like 99% of the time anyway. So, screw this, let's go ahead and go to new notebook. Get rid of our little man here. Now, the goal here is to break it again, because if I can consistently break it, I, I may actually have something. Okay, so we, we said here our equation was this. We were able to solve it for declination, but the solution was very, very ugly. And, oh, I guess we we're trying to simplify that, and that's when, that's how we broke uh, Mathematica. Okay. And I don't even think we need to do anything else, because we're not, we're not really, um... So we were able to do this. Let me make sure we can still do it. It's, it's ugly, but we were able to do it. And it, in under a minute. Whoa! That's right, we were not able to do it... ...until... We said, we're going to pretend that when you give arctan 2... <coughs> excuse me. We're going to pretend that the two-argument format form of arctan can be reduced to the one-argument, which it can't, actually. It, that's not true. Uh, but then, it's, you know, it's, it almost can be. So this is good. So we have... Okay, so we did, we did it. We, we got it. Uh, and then we want to simplify this. And that's where last time we broke... Wolfram Cloud. Let's see if we can break it again. Uh, okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, it's still going. It's still going. Nothing lasts like the Energizer Bunny. Uh, was an old ad slogan. Okay. So, the attempt to simplify this hideousness might be where Wolfram Alpha, where Wolfram Cloud is choking. I just don't, um, it just doesn't want to, um, to simplify. That's odd. I mean, it'll give you the answer in a hideous, ugly form, but, uh, it won't simplify that. Okay, well, let's see if we can get the, um, out of the simplified version, let's see if we can get the latitude. And I'm guessing it's going to be just as ugly. No, 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 no. Okay, wait. Stop. Uh, I think the simplify is going to kill us again. I want it unsimplified, and it's probably going to be just as ugly as the the latter. The uh, yeah, there it is. I mean, there's part of it. Uh, I could certainly have that expand expand all. Um, there's definitely a way to expand all. Show more. Show all. Okay. Yeah. This this is just so freaking insane. Um and why are there fourth powers in this? It just, it just doesn't even make sense. Uh, but there it is. I'm not going to cut and paste that cuz it's just pointless at this. Can you figure out the Greenwich mean standard time please from these lovely from this lovely um yes you can. This is just fucking gorgeous. I mean, it's math porn, essentially. How about the longitude? Well, you can probably tell us. If you can tell us the GMST, you can tell us the longitude. Yeah, because it's basically going to just depend on the other stuff here. Um, the only thing, other interesting thing here is, well, longitude, right, right ascension, you're going to get a similar result. Cosine of the declination times the cosine of the latitude. By the way, that might have also been the problem we were having with the other uh, equation that gave us the azimuth is that we had a two-argument form of arc tangent, which doesn't work well. Uh, Mathematica has some real problems with that. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if I can find just a pure example here. Um, uh, 
This is brilliant. It won't tell you what the arc, uh, the function is, uh, but if you know that arc tangent of x, y is z, you can solve for x by taking the inverse function of arc tan one two z y. Don't know what that is, but you know, that is that is just a bizarre, bizarre uh, thing. So now, if we, by the way, x comma y is y over x. Now, if we do this, of course, it's trivial. Yeah. Wait. What? Um. The inverse function of arctan is tan. I mean, this is trivial. You take the tan of both sides, and then... Mm. Okay, I don't know why it's being weird now. I think... Oh, shit, shit, shit. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I do need to do it correctly before we can... All right, sorry. Try it again. With the real arctan function this time, please. Okay. So it, it is able to solve it in simple cases like that. Um, this is just fucking weird, though. Yeah. So apparently it needs imaginary numbers. I think, though, if you say solve over the reals, we can, we can make it uh, be a little bit less ugly. Yep. So it can't be solved in the reals, but it can be solved in the complex numbers, I just that's just insane. Okay, um, so now we're, we're we're getting we're getting getting something interesting out of these equations. I mean, not what I actually wanted out of them, um, but that's that's kind of interesting. If you have uh, these uh, the you know the altitude and you know all this other stuff, you can in fact come up with the uh, the uh, declination or the right ascension if you make the assumption that the arctan function is is like that. Is you know we can do stuff with it like that. So. This is hideous. I'm going to push this to get just because I want to push something this ugly to get. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And I think this is declination goes to. Yeah, declination. This might need its own file. Oh my god. So there's multiple solutions to declination under the conditions we've given, although I think some of them reduce to each other under our simplification. Okay, so now... Um, these are the really difficult equations that we that we have, uh, and they're not they're good in the sense that I've gotten new information out of them that I didn't have before, uh, but bad in the sense that um, bad in the sense that they're not really good for testing our sort of uh, these functions here, because some of them don't have solutions, some of them we have to alter to have solutions, blah 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 blah. Um, so there's some really easy functions up here, uh, like uh, et to unix. Okay, uh, the time functions here, which apparently are all sp what the hell, man? Unless I'm using et in this next, why is this function up here instead of down here with the rest of the time functions? So these time functions are interesting in the sense that. Um, you can get from any any of these et t mjd jd and d which are four different things to each other uh, using using these formulas th using these relations or combinations of these relations however this is the magic part it's not going to be um, and the, the the techniques we have right now to solve these variables for each other is not going to give us what we want um, because it is not quite, um, oh, what am I trying to say? I don't know. Okay. Um, because there, there's not quite enough crossover right now. Uh, and this is going to help us explore, if we have formulas for other stuff, can we cross those formulas over to create even more formulas? Um, so let's, let's boogie down here. So obviously we're going to copy these over here. I really need to get rid of this. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy now. I liked it when it was... It's, it's cool. It's fucking cool. But it's also fucking taking up too much unnecessary room. Okay. Meta yank. There we go. 
And so we will have these equations as e, e to the unix. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, unix is equal to et this. Um, unix is also equal to t, where t is the mjd, the modified Julian date. Okay, that's not clear at all. Um, MJD, the modified Julian date, is equal to the Julian date minus this number, which is, the, I think, the year 2000. Um, and Unix is also equal to this. Oh, okay, so this is this is where we... Um, wait. MJD to Unix. Okay. Got to be careful here. This, I think, is a redundant. Uh, JD to Unix, so... Um, Right, so here's an example. Uh, this will convert M B MGD and G JD back and forth. This will convert MJD to Unix. And this will convert uh, ephemeris time um, to Unix to give the relation between those. MJD to JMST, JD to Unix. Um, what I'm saying is with these, we should be able to get, um, if we wanted to, in real life, we could get all sorts of other relations out of these. Uh, but what I'm going to say is that the problem is we're not going to get all of these relations because these are different functions. Uh, because these are different um, these are different relations that don't touch each other, but they should. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure. Is we need one more that has ET in it, not the alien. Um... Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe none of them have ET in them. Okay, that's cool. All right. This maybe will be enough to, to prove our point. Um, then it might not be. I don't know. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. If I knew what the hell I was doing, would I be here? Maybe. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, restart session, which hopefully won't break everything. Yeah. Restart session without bringing Wolfman back. That's the man they need. All right. So we're going to do this. This is our sort of our... Um, these are our sort of default functions here. We will, however, merge them all. Nice try. All right, so now we're going to say our equation is, we have multiple ones, but let's see. Um, and I think in this case, yeah, let's, let's, go, let's go ahead and do this. But I mean, in this case, it's actually really, really simple. Let's go ahead and copy all three of these, actually. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll clean them up a little bit. And actually, can we get away with saying this is a, uh, this is, um, these are three separate uh, equalities? Um, I'm pretty sure I can't feed this to um, uh, define convert, but I can feed them to it like this. And this should be very trivial, very simple. Or define covert. That is the version of the function that does not work. Okay. So not surprising, we got this back. Um, and then I can do a define convert. Let's just go ahead and of the other two. Okay. So what we have here is, you know. Um, ET to Unix and Unix to ET, gorgeous. MJD to Unix, Unix to MJD, and these two between each other, which, which is exactly what you would expect. These are very simple equivalences that are using only two variables. Uh, so obviously we're going to get this uh, very simple uh, equivalence between them. The problem now is we need to figure out um, 
This takes uh, Unix to ET. This is not useful to us, is it? Um, and then this takes, uh, let's, sorry, this takes ET to Unix. Well, why is there a um, underscore in this? Oh, right, right, because that's the form we needed in if we wanted to make it a function. Okay. And this takes uh, Unix to MJD. So we really should be able to take ET to MJD by con combining these functions. Um, but right now, we don't really have a way of doing that. We have, uh, we have ET to Unix, Unix to blah, 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 and the question is, how do we... Um, how do we say Unix to MJ? Okay, so we want ET to Unix, Unix to MJD. All right, Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we are back. Okay. Now the question is, um, how do I hit the mic like that? No. The question is, how do I convert, knowing that I have a way to go from ET to Unix and Unix to MJD, how do we chain these together? Actually, this is the one that's Unix. Okay, sorry. MJD to Unix, Unix to ET. Okay, ET to Unix, Unix to MJD. So how do we chain these together? Um, I don't know the answer to that, I'm actually asking. Um, so if we had these all in one sort of big big function, which, which we will, which we can certainly do, um, then we would basically need to look at, okay, let's see. Um, We'd want to look for cases where, and I, I assume we could do a flatten one on these, so we just have a bunch of um, really nasty looking things here, actually. Um, do I need, necessarily need all of these braces here? Uh, actually, I might, because this actually could be a, a, a list. Because uh, it is it is a list of things we'll give you. This one isn't a list. This one is a list because it's actually the same as this one. And this one probably... Oh, could because we're going to have multiple solutions. This does need to be a list as well. By the way, one thing I actually... Um, there's nothing to do with what we're doing now, but... Um, I thought it'd be interesting to run this on would be the quadratic equation. Because, I mean, it'll solve for B and C. And if I knew how to type it in, a, x, a times x squared times b plus, times x plus c equal equals zero, go. Wow, one day I'm learn how to type, and th then things will get so much better. All right, so here we go. What's why this is vaguely interesting. Um, if you know b, x, and a in this equation, you can get c out of it by just taking minus b. <laughs> If you do x, c, and a, you can get um, b out of it, doing this, 
And if you know a, B, and C, that's the standard quadratic equation. You can get, that's what most people want to do, is get X out of this equation. If you know X, C, and B, though, you could get A out of it by doing this. So this is the sort of, this is the sort of generalization of, you know, uh, given this equation, even though we normally think of A, B, and C as being the inputs, the constants, you could, in fact, solve for any one of those and get some, get some interesting looking functions out of it. Um, so that is interesting to me and probably to no one else, but I liked it. Okay, so now getting back to the problem at hand, um, how do we look for, uh, you know, where we have all these sets, how do we look for ways to string them together? And then when we find how to string them together, how do we actually do that? Because I'm not, it's not clear to me, ETD, Unix, Unix, to MGD, so we have this, um, and I guess we would replace Unix with this. Uh, which is the value of Unix. So, a little bit ugly. Um, but I think the harder part is figuring out when we have combinations like this. Uh, and I guess, so in this case, we're asking for... Uh, right, so, we have this all as one big list of quasi, you know, of, of, of outputs. Um, and this one actually might be redundant. We might be able to get rid of it and just get it uh, manually w when we need it. But, um, let's see. Um, so what we have here is basically, I think, six separate uh, equations. Six separate, con six separate chunkies, thingamabobbies that we want. Uh, this gives us two. This gives us two. This gives us two, not surprising. This one is shiny, but it's going away. And so, I'm pretty sure if I do this, uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to have one level of nesting that's too deep. So I'm not going to get six, I'm going to get three. But I think I can fix that. Okay. And, well, we'll just, I don't, I do want to see that. Length test 1146. And it's going to be three, I think. Yeah. All right. So I need to take this and I need to flatten it exactly at level one. No, I don't. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't need to flatten it level zero. Yeah, that's not, that's not, yeah, it should be list of positive. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to happen. Let me see if it's just flatten one, one and higher, but I, don't, I think that's going to be a huge mess. But apparently it's the correct huge mess. God damn it. They change the way flatten works, which is why I sometimes have trouble with it. So let's see if the one is the one we think it is. There it is. Okay, good. So each of them has four elements. Um, so now what we're looking for in this list is cases where did he Unix, Unix where the the second element of the list is equal to the in listed first element of an other list. Um, I won't say that again because I'm not sure I understood it. Uh, let's see. So actually this is like a this is like doing a database join here. Um, we're trying to join something that looks like ET to Unix to something that looks like ET Unix to MJD to get back ET to MJD. Um, uh, and, and Unix should be, and Unix, and Mathematica should be able to do this. Um, the only question is how? And then ET to Unix, there's other ones in here that, that also can be combined. But there's more of a problem here too. What if, um, what if it turns out ET could give us Unix and something else? And then we had something here that was like a, like a two, uh, you know, required two inputs to get one output. We'd still be okay then because of, because we, you know, one variable or whatever, one set of variables can give us multiple things. Um, as an example of that here, we have Unix can give us E, gotta be careful, Unix can give us ET, Unix can give us MJD. Um, 
So really we want to say like Unix comma etmgd. The, the, the full give set of Unix is this. Um, and then we need to, then if there's something that, um, so you know, Unix gives us, I'm just going to type this out, um, both mjd and et. Now in this case there's not going to be anything interesting about that, but let's say there was something that mjd and et could give us, we could chain that together. Um, and so that's where we have this sort of uh, um, ugly looking, uh, the, the sort of ugly looking uh, hideousness. We can collect these now by the, um, we should be able to collect these now um, yeah, this is, this is weird. Um, because we're trying to do multiple things here. We, we, I mean, we have a definition for these functions, which was the whole point of creating that convert quote unquote function. Um, but now we also need to sort of look at the sets themselves individually and say, um, I think, I think we can do collect. We can say collect by the second variable. Um, and collect involving the same powers. Okay, so collect is is apparently going to want to use powers. I wonder if there's an equivalent for. Um, let's see. I was under the impression you could collect things that had any things in similar that you wanted. Um, but maybe that's together. Puts terms in a... Okay, that's not it either. All right. Ah, uh, there's another word for this. It's not together, apart, cancel, collect. I could have sworn it was collect, actually. Let me see if there's something else that's more generic. But collect should be what we actually need. Cases, maybe? Um, cases at... No, I think, I think we can use collect here. Um, and it should be where the second items are equivalent. One way of saying that is is this equal equal nope 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 nope. Uh, no 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 no. The first thing of a Bob's second element is equal to the second thing of a Bob's second element as a function. Let's see you do that. I think it might have actually. Um, so at this point I have no freaking idea what the hell it's done, but let's go ahead and be a little bit, um, less spammy here. Okay, so has it actually collected for us, um, cases where the second elements are the same? We probably could find out by assigning this variable. And then looking at the first element of this new list that it's created for us. That's not looking too good. Um, also not looking too good. One of these should be a collection. Um, Nope, I think we've, I think this has done literally nothing to that list. Yep, still has six elements. Okay, so collect was not the way to uh, do this, although I, I could have sworn it was, actually. So I might just be doing this, this comparison wrong. Um, can I collect it using this? My collect condition? Uh-oh. Oh, I haven't printed any output. So then show me what temp 1152 looks like. Uh, once again, I don't think I've actually changed it, but let's take a look at the length real quick to see um, if I have. Nope, I haven't. Okay. 
So collect, gather. Oh, it's gather that I'm thinking of, not collect. Sorry. Pretty sure gather is the one I want. Um, and I'm pretty sure gather can use an arbitrary function. Let's make sure though. By you know typing it and then hoping for the little magical pop-up. Well, screw it. Screw the pop-up. Okay. And now the length is 4, which is good because we 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 think that it is push some of these together. Okay. Okay, so this is I think the first element is going to show us that we have two cases where Unix is the middle um no. That Oh, I'm sorry. We need to change this back to 2 because we were just experimenting earlier. This is what we actually want. And there we go. So we have ET to Unix, MJD to Unix, and um, yes, it's actually the other way around. We had it correct the first time. We want to know what um, what the reachability set is of the thing that's the input, not the output. So one more time. Okay, here we go. So what this says here is if you have Unix as the input, you can get both ET and MJD out of it. Um, so let's see. And now that we know that, uh, so therefore we can do anything that had ET, MJD as a as an input requirement, um, or, or any subset of ETMJD as a as a requirement. God damn, that's complicated. Um, and this is actually a separate problem from getting these equations working. This is just a question of reachability in in, in graph theory. Um, so we might be able to solve this problem separately and then stick it into the you know stick the variables into it. Um, and this might just be the transitive closure, although I, I, I get the feeling it's not. I get the feeling there's more to this than I'm, than I'm seeing here. Um, so let's see, Unix, DT, DT, Unix, da, 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 da. Yeah. And even with the transitive closure, we actually need the path of the transitive closure that gives us what we want. But I think the transitive closure is involved. So let's see what we can do with that. So this is, um, so now this we can go back to functions of relations. I think at one point we actually did have a graph in here, um, by which I mean we did not have a graph in here. Come to we did actually. Um, it might have been edge, no? All right, hang on while I try to figure out what the hell I was doing earlier. I have no idea. Mathematica. Clean up. I don't know if I can do that. Oh, I hope that worked. Dependencies graph. Yes. Okay, good. So this is all coming together, but in a very non um, Mr. Burns like way. Okay, we have F da 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 graph, 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 graph. Um, transitive closure. Um, so the, the big change here is we're actually now using. Uh, equations to determine what we have here, and I think we can merge these together. Um, I think we can merge these together. So we have something that's vaguely, let me go ahead and cut and paste what I have from Mathematica here, because this is actually quasi useful. Uh, we'll just paste that over here. I'm going to BC get this because I'm a freaking paranoid. And okay, so now let's try merging these together uh, in some intelligent way. Um, and I think we can use this very simple example if I could find it again. This one, yeah, very simple example to sort of uh, just sort of see what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and over here. 
Oy vey. Okay. You know what? Let's... Let's... I think from here on out we don't need this. We still need our basic functions. Uh, and now we could say define convert. Oh, actually, hang on. We need our we need we need our equations. Um, undo, 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 undo. There we go. Yeah, we still do need our, our little equation guys here. Okay. Um, so now we could say um, define convert of eqn. And I think we're going to need a function. Holy fuck. Nope. Of EQN1. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Pomodoro back in two and two. And we are back. So uh, right now our, let's see, our variable solutions gives us a bunch of results. Um, which is good. Okay. So from our define convert, um, The idea is we want to take our define convert, although can we, I'm trying to see if we can do it before we do our define convert. Uh, solution to function. Um, so that takes a given solution and puts it into a function. The problem we're going to have with that, though, is symbol to, no, that's fine. The only place we're going to have a real problem with this is if the, if um, solve can't solve it. And I thought there was a check for that. Um, unless I forgot to copy it back to, oh, that would be really bad if I forgot to copy it back to, uh, uh, back to uh, functions of relations that I thought I did. Oh! Oh, that is bad. That is really, really bad. That, that's, that's, that's punishably bad. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Um, it's somewhere in the history, baby. But the general idea here was, um, if the solution had a head of, um, it basically had this if statement here, if, this is 
okay, so this is like, I guess I sort of discovered why um, I have to be a little bit more careful when I'm fucking around with Wolfram Cloud, because if I do something here that's useful, I do need to, um, I do need to uh, save it to the, uh, to the where I have actual crap. Okay, can I revert to backup? Um, let's see what that does. That didn't really help. Okay. So I probably could have just done Control Z or something enough times, but that's still really ugly. Um. And I'm pretty darn sure that I did not bother to save it anywhere. Let's see if we can get this in, um... I want some details here, man. Where's where's my list of by time? Oh, hang on. Date modified. Saturday, January the fourth. We're nowhere near there. Let's see, user explorations maybe. Okay, that's today. So is this... No, these are both modified ages ago. Oh, yeah. Cannot up that's where I was seeing the thing I couldn't do. Um, but I'm not trying to upload files. I'm trying to get back into the folder. That, that's really terrible, though, that now they have symbols that look like they're saying go up a directory, but they mean upload. This is why we, even though I'm, you know, I say I'm opposed to reading, this is why we really do need to preserve some form of reading. Um, yeah. Fortunately, in this case, I do remember what it was. It was basically if head of sol uh, equal equal solve return nothingness. Um, but that, and of course we have it on video, but that's also, um, there actually is a way to watch a Twitch video while you're recording it, kind of like that, uh, Spaceballs thing, except you can't look into the future because that's, would be time travel. Um, but it's really ugly and I don't want to use it. And I don't mean the clip feature, which goes back a minute. I'm talking about, you could look at the whole thing from the beginning by using the site, but I mean, it's, it's ugly. Um, okay. So, da, 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 so solution to function gives it to us for one solution. And I guess define convert just gives it to us for all of the, um, all of the solutions. So what we're trying to do here, um, is we kind of, from define convert or one of these things, we want to build a map, a graph actually, that says, what can you reach from what? And it's probably not going to be trivial. Because, I mean, define convert will give us, you know, what you can reach from what in a very basic sense. Um, but we need to actually, we can actually extend that list of things of, you know, to from things. So let's, let's see how we do that. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and use these very wonderful formulas that I, I really, really, really... I should, I'm going to do some studying of Wolfram Alpha, maybe on stream. Okay, so we have all these wonderful things here. We will combine them all. Why, oh why, oh why, oh why. Merge. Merge like the wind. All right, they're all merged now. Okay. Still in the cell. We want... We want some equations, please. And the very simple ones we're using as tests. And I think the only thing we need to do here is to put parentheses around these suckers. And then commas to combine them. And a good home. <coughs> Excuse me. In the radio broadcasts, they have a cough button that you can press.
if you're coughing, to silence the mic. Either that, or it makes people cough. Um, okay. Oh, actually, I can just paste this. I don't have to... <coughs> I don't have to, uh, text fill it. Okay. So now... Define... We need to really rename this function. EQNS1... And <coughs> so what we really need from this is um, the first two elements of each subset. And the, the sort of issue I'm having here is, I don't know if we necessarily want to call it define convert um, just to get these two set elements, ET Unix and over here, uh, Unix ET. So um, that is where I'm having the sort of disconnect. The problem is, it's not clear to me if, I mean, here we're making the assumption that, uh, that you know, any, um, any n minus one variables can generate the other variable. Um, but that might be an assumption we're making just sort of generically for the whole thing. Um, so, and I think that might be the only way to do it, because if you have fewer than n minus one variables, that's fine because you know the excess variables don't hurt you any. And if you have multiple, so the thing we're not getting out of here is we're not we're not saying uh, we have multiple ways of getting to the si one thing can get us to multiple different things. That's what we're not saying here, and that's kind of what we want to be able to do. Um, so, I. think think we can get that un under the assumption that it's that everything is solvable um, which maybe is not a great assumption um, then I think we already have a function to do that and I think whoa no mama um, and I think that function is uh, oh yeah there it is um, rest determine one so this basically says that um, if you have a list of variables, uh, the rest determine one means that uh, that you know from from any n minus one of them you can get to the nth one. The problem here is that's not necessarily true, uh, and it might not be useful to make that assumption. Um, Uh, so that that's that's kind of where the the issue is here. Um, kind of stuck here. Uh, I mean, I guess you pretty much have to use EQNS then. I mean, sorry, we have to use define convert, um, and then basically just have it uh, you know just take the um, for every solution that it gives us, which we actually need to glue. Oh, actually, hang on. So this is. So define convert works for one equation, one expression. Um, we need more than that. We actually need one that does it for all the expressions and puts them together in a way that's, that's that does that one level of flattening that we were doing previously. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. So solution to function only does it for one. Define convert does it for an expression. One, the thing that will do it for uh, one level higher will map define convert, which we will change its name to, uh, into um, into all of the uh, equations that we're given. So now the input for this will be a set of equations, and the output will be um, well, lots of stuff. But one of the outputs will be a list of a list of all possible ways to get from one set to the other set, or something like that. And then we need to uh, then we need to start grouping stuff together. Then we need to sort of examine what we can get from where and and start talking about putting in additional stuff. Uh, like you know if we can get to uh, chaining is one of them, and the other is if you can get from Unix to X and Unix to Y, you can get from Unix to X comma Y. 
uh, and that is important because X comma Y might give you information that you can get without, with, you know, without having X or Y. X comma Y might give you information that either X or Y by itself cannot give you. Um, okay, so that was pretty damn confusing. Um, oh, did I take Pomodoro last time? Uh, anyway, I'm not sure. I think I did actually. Um, but anyway, okay, so now, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, we've been going for about one hour, 40 minutes. I don't want to continue with this because it's ugly, but I do want to read up on some documentation. And honestly, this is so incredibly boring. I thought about stopping the stream, but then I realized, hey, boredom are us. So here we go. And here we're going to look at, whoa, your mama, let's make this full screen or at least bigger. Now, you know it's good documentation when it has shiny colors. Um, core language and structure. I'm trying to figure out what's specific to Wolfram Cloud. Uh, what I can do with it that's actually... Um, here we are. User interface construction, system operation setup, cloud and deployment. Because this is where I want to... I'm, I'm okayly familiar with Mathematica itself. Um, oh, this is all, all good stuff too. And But I'm not so familiar with their, the Wolfram Cloud sort of um, overlay on Mathematica. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pin this sucker. Second thing we're going to do is uh, bring up a new notebook, because we always do that. And third thing we're going to do is get rid of Wolfman. I wonder if there's an option to not have Wolfman. That would be probably the the most uh, close taps to the right. Now we're in a beautiful three-tab situation. Let's take a look. Working in notebooks. Nope, nope, nope. Hang on. I'm going to be obnoxious and go ahead and bring it up in a separate tab. Okay. Create a text cell. Wait, is this just a bunch of links? Oh, come on. Give us the fucking text. Okay. Uh, you can mix text in blah, 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 style text. Using the input chooser. Okay. That's not very exciting. Create a section heading, insert a hyperlink, enter math notation. That's probably, um, um, okay, that's not exciting either. Entering sub styling and, oh, there's more, is this dot, 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 I mean, there's more, oh, <gasps> shiny. Oh, that brings up the whole thing, maybe? Yes, it does. It brings up, so I think this or this would have brought up the whole section. Styling and formatting, cells and grouping. So this might be what I need. Seriously? So is this what I need? Wow. They are really stingy with this documentation. Um, I want to download this book. Um, ooh, interactive open course. So apparently you cannot download this book as a PDF, unless you can. It looks like they want to sell it to you. Um, however, I am, I am fascinated by this interactive open course bullshit. Um, full interactive course, level beginner. Ooh. This better be free. Oh, it is free. Well, well, well. Oh, shit. It's, uh, bullshit, though. It's video. Okay, that's bullshit. Working in notebooks, cells and grouping. Okay. Um, creating a cell, creating a section heading. Oh, we already did this. Open and close cell groups. Maybe that's what I want. Okay. Oh, that's shiny. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Uh, so 
So now you're telling me I can click on this. Is this the little thingy that you click on to say, be gone? But this clearly went the other way. This clearly did what I didn't want. It clearly... So if I do this, it all goes away. No, some of it goes away. Click on this, does it go away? Kind of. No. The wrong thing goes away. Click on this, get everything back. That is actually a somewhat useful tip. Unfortunately, I don't think right-click works because it, the browser is still taking that, but that's not bad. That could be useful. Um, although it seems to do the exact opposite of what the instructions say it does. It opens it, sort of closes it. Okay, the Pomodoro back in two and two. And we are back. Okay, so that was something that was quasi-useful. Okay. So I'm not sure we're actually getting the full um, interface here that's working correctly. Because we're not really getting like the double arrow and stuff here, but maybe, maybe. Um, this could be useful. Yeah, this could be useful. Okay, good deal. Um, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Um, interesting. So we can do... So we do have some options here under um, cell, which I've not really seen. I guess it's under format. Not what I wanted. Okay, let's take a look here. What the hell, how the hell did you get to this? Format, cell, graphics, evaluation. So clearly the web interface does not have all of these things. Um, or if it does, they're in different places, because we don't have a, um, we don't, definitely don't have a, uh, cell graphics value, we don't have graphics here. So we do have a lot of other stuff, but okay, that's, that's, that's somewhat useful. Let's continue. Um, cell brackets may not be available to hover over them or not at all. Um, where the cell brackets would be, I like that. Um... Um, oh, okay, well, maybe we, we have something here. Cell style. I think that part is not text formatting. Is there more to this? Source code pro. That's okay. Background alignment, no frame. Oh, you know what? I think I do want a frame. 
Oh, that's so much better. Dingbat. Okay, this is probably stupid now. Filled star. Oh, I can't use that, can I? Okay, we're good. Um, is there anything else I can do here? Okay, that is actually like a hundred billion times better. So the alignment here should be left ragged. Um, okay, that is gorgeous. I, I had real trouble seeing separate cells until this. All right, so we learned something. Alrighty, so da 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 da, and now we can go back to over here. Display a uh, notebook. Okay, add a banner. Choose a style sheet. Delete. Okay, let's see what that does. Um. Okay, so cell labels are just what Mathematica calls in and outs. Um. Display a notebook full screen. Divide and merge cells might be interesting. Um. Okay, so Command Shift M could, in theory, merge uh, cells together. Uh, what the hell was it again? <laughs> it was Command Shift M. I don't know if it's going to actually accept Command Shift M. Command Shift M. It did not seem to like that. I don't know if it can actually read my keyboard the same way it can read most keyboards. Okay, and again, this is also the web version, so it's not quite the same thing. Alrighty, graphics and image, get coordinates, active elements and control. Those are cool, but we're not doing them. Run a computation, reuse input. Okay, so this is getting closer to what we want. Um, shift return, which is what I do. That is brilliant. But unfortunately, it's going to create a, oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I forgot, didn't notice these little tabs. Um, okay. I guess we can go back over here now and see things about, let's see, um, entering and editing text, creating a text cell, entering math, uh, enter special characters. Um, let's, let's do this now with the little um, in cloud thing. Oh, cool. Okay, so that is what it was supposed to be doing in in the cloud version that I'm using. Divide and merge cells. So how can I merge cells in the cloud version? I think I just have to say, divide a cell, do that. Oops, 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 cloud. I'm always in the cloud. Hover and click. Okay, so this is basically, I have to use the merge cell, which is what I've been doing anyway. So that's okay. Open, and so here we run a computation. Shift return. Okay. Good shit there. Reuse input from above is, I think, the thing I'm not doing right now. Um, well, no, I don't want to do it programmatically by line number, you idiots. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, not obviously not the stupidest, but uh, enter freeform input, set up an initialization cell. Yeah, let's do that. That could be interesting. For the first user evaluation after the notebook is opened. Um, okay. Hover the cell. Da -da -da -da, set is, so we already did this. Um, That was kind of nice. Enter freeform input. Okay. Shiny. Lots of zebras here, or zebras if you are American. Okay. Avoid dynamic content warnings. Get information on the current notebook. Woo. Chat. I don't think that's necessarily a good idea right now. Okay, well that was actually fairly informative. Let's go back now to the main uh, working in notebooks, using the Wolfram language, working in the cloud. That is actually going to be really useful because that's what we're doing. Copy a desktop notebook, share a cloud, embed each, nope, storing data in the cloud. 
store data in cloud expression, put a downloadable file in the cloud, run a computation, there we go. I want my command line. Ooh. Okay, the, the problem here is still that you cannot interactively use Wolfram script, you know, which is probably intentional because that would be really useful. Um, not what I wanted. Um, okay, this may be closer to what I want, but I still think they're not going to let me do what I really want. Deploy an API to the cloud. Um, okay, no. Managing your cloud account. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is find that is there a way to include a file, uh, sort of auto include a file into every notebook. Uh, that would be like my library or something. Um, and I guess I could do a search for that instead of reading the documentation. Um, fast introductions. For <laughs> I'm both. Okay. Okay. So the questions I'm asking might be more difficult than a merely uh, something that I could get from the documentation. Um, preload file in every notebook. Let's see what that does. Um, that is nowhere external evaluate. I bet you they don't allow me to do that. Um, Or if they do, probably not in the cloud version. Okay, that didn't tell me what I wanted to know, though. Um, auto load file into notebook. Actually, I think there is a there is a boost productivity. Yes, path. I don't know if this will work though. Um, okay, so I'm wondering if I can do a load uh, in Wolfram Alpha. They might not allow that. Um, of course, in order to load, oops, load. And they will not give me help with that, but I think load. So in theory, this would be like a one-liner that I could put anywhere if it allows me to load crap. So let's take a look here. Cloud.wolfram.com. Uh, show me my existing files. Copied files. Ooh, shiny. Ooh, very shiny. But, god damn it. My files. Let's say matrix fail here. Um, open, open in desktop, move, download details. Can I do copy URL? Is that, is that what I want? Uh, let me just see if I can just do matrix fail.nb. Let's see how it likes that. Let's see if I know what the hell I'm doing. Probably not. Oh, here it is. Matrix fail dot nb. I'm going to expect a file not found. Interesting. In the sense of not at all interesting. Um. Okay, what the hell is in, in matrix file NB? I guess that would be the... Uh, OK, 
God damn it. Open in new fucking tab is what I'm saying. So this should be some cool stuff in here. Cool. Now let's see if I can call the function XYZ to spherical because I loaded uh, matrix MB. I don't think I can because I don't think it really did anything. Yep. Okay. So it did not load matrix file NB. And maybe it load is a function, though. I'm pretty sure it's the opposite of save. Uh, maybe I need the URL. That, that actually kind of makes sense. Because I think I tried this last time and it did say something like I can't load Google because it's Google is not a um, Google is the web. Oh, yeah, that's not looking too good. Um, uh, can I read? It? I'm pretty sure though that okay. Well, you know what? Let's look at save and see what the opposite of save is. Okay, good. Don't give me any information on save because that would be too useful. Uh, right. Let me go to my real Mathematica real quick and see what what load does. I'm pretty sure that's what it literally is for. Oh, it doesn't exist. Um, um, okay, well, read apparently is, can do that. So let's do a read. Read that URL, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to need quotation marks around this. And let's see what that does. Ah, uh, motherfucker. Well, yes, but it's not really supposed to be, um... Okay. Storing data... Hmm... Okay. Cloud read notebook into other notebook. Let's see, let's see if you figure that out. Um, import. Uh, I don't think that's what I need. I think import's going to give it to me like as a. Um, let's see if it even works, but. Interesting. Uh, I can't import that because I'm, it it makes the connection as though I am not logged in. Nice. Now the question is, can I log get it like this because it should be local to where I am now? And I think the answer to that is, ooh, shiny. Okay. This is good. Now, can I just evaluate that as, uh, I don't think it's going to work either, but let's see what happens. Yeah, I don't know if I can actually evaluate that, what I want to be doing there. Um, okay. So, import is not the magic that we need. Um... Information off the notebook import. Now that's what we're talking about. Uh, all right, let's see if we can do that. Um, notebook import matrix fail dot nb. Um, that's actually pretty cool, but I guess I need to put something here. Comma what? Style. Okay. Um, I guess boxes? I'm way out in the boonies here. Oh. Wait, yes it does. Oh, alright, fine. We'll put a semicolon there to make you happy. 
Oh shit. My bad. Let's see what this does. Okay, so that didn't work. But now if I use the full path, it still won't work, I think, because uh, of permissions issues. But hey, who knows? Copy URL, move, download, delete, details. Um, copy URL. I don't think this is going to work because I don't have the permissions for this. But let's see what this does. No notebook found at this location. Okay. Uh, it is Pomodoro time, but it's also I'm getting sick to death of this time. So thank you for watching the stream, and goodbye.